First, let's look at this timeline. If you just remember with me, John chapter 20, verse 1, it says on that first day of the week, early in the morning, when it was still, anybody? Still dark. Anybody up this morning at dark? All right, all right, you're my people. All right. So that's when Mary goes to the tomb. And that's where the stone is rolled away. It was still dark. She goes to the disciples, uh, Peter and John, the one whom Jesus loved, who wrote this gospel. They run to the tomb. They look in. Peter goes in. Mary comes back with them. They go back. And then she has this encounter with the angel. And then the gardener, who wasn't the gardener, it was Jesus, and her sorrow is turned to joy. By the time that that's over, and Jesus says, don't cling on to me, let me go, tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. All of that was probably, I mean, that could have been just a couple of hours. It was most likely still before breakfast. Going from when it was still dark to them, you know, having this encounter, Mary having this encounter with the gardener Jesus. A couple hours, mid-morning at most. She comes back, right, this timeline, she comes back and says, I've seen the Lord. Say it's 10, 10 a.m. You know what this means? In verse 19, when John writes, that evening, there was probably at least eight hours, maybe more, 10 hours, where they heard Mary. Mary probably told the story and told the story and told the story because she was filled with joy. They're listening to her. They had eight hours to do what? To think about what does this mean? They had eight, over eight hours probably to process, time to process Mary's words. They had time for that initial, you know, John, uh, John and Peter anyway, they ran to the tomb and back. They had time for that initial adrenaline rush to kind of settle. They had time to remember their circumstances and the threat that was real. They had time to wonder about the resurrection. The text even tells us that they didn't quite know from Scripture that Jesus had to be raised from the dead. They, didn't, they hadn't put that together yet. Jesus would, do, Jesus would connect those dots for them in the days to come. They had all of these hours to think about what, what was going on. They had time to fear. Because that's what verse 19 tells us. They were locked in that room that evening because they were afraid. Can you imagine the roller coaster they were on? And then Jesus comes in, and what does he say? Jesus came, stood among them, and said, peace be with you. They're filled with fear, and Jesus says, peace be with you. And after that, he, sh he said that, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus says, he says it twice, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus reverses the irreversible. And he takes his disciples, rightfully afraid, and he gives them peace. In the midst of their uncertainty and fear, Jesus offers peace. His presence offers peace. Peace. 